Thanks so much for joining in, everyone. I have Whitney Lynn here, one of our mentors within the Accelerator here at New Chip. And so we're going to take some time and dive a little bit into his experience and what he's been encountering here. But just to give you a little background, Whitney, once leaving the U.S. Army, began his business career in running multiple organizations as a president, as well as an investor. But an interesting fact about him is that he finds a lot of business practices that are similar to his experience as being a triathlete. So thanks so much for hopping on the call, Whitney. Well, thank you for having me. I think it's really fun. I'm just, as I said, I'm just having the best time ever. That's Great. awesome. So just to kind of start off with, I know you're, you're really enjoying your time here at New Chip, but what was it that brought you into New Chip? What stood out to you about us? Well, I just think that your business model of having the startups, the investor, because you know one by itself in other words if you're a startup trying to find investors to even talk to a very difficult proposition mm -hmm. and then trying to trying to get some help to you know kind of a launch if you will in your startup is even more mm -hmm. but to have a three-pronged you know group or um, startups the investors and the mentor, I think it's brilliant. And just the way you put it together makes it fun, it, it's interactive. And, and I've met two of the coolest CEOs in the world. <laughs> Having so much fun, uh, a lot of time, but experience, and I'm very impressed, at least with the two I know about, of the quality of the companies that come in to new ship. It's absolutely. That's awesome. What are some of the conversations that you've been having and uh, working on the most with some of the companies? That's a great question. And I must say, it's very similar because both these startups are, 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 are startups by brilliant, educated, smart, focused PhDs, engineering degrees, MBAs. And so the first task is a pitch deck. And in both cases, uh, we've had to start from scratch because what they did was take all their information here, which was all product oriented, it's all market oriented. Here's what it's going to do, and you know, here are all these things that are that are just confusing. And the idea that both of them have been so open about scrapping uh, mm -hmm. what they started with, and again, being a mentor, as you know, it's not demanding, it's working with, it's their company, it's their pitch deck, but I'm just so pleased with how open both of these have been, because yeah. when we start talking about it, they understand that if you're in front of an investor, he really doesn't care about all these, all these little details, and in the first two or three or four slides, you have to get him. You have to create that that desire to learn more. And it's too much of both of these presentations. We're way too technical. We're way too involved. And I think a lot of them also think that these investors are really smart. Well, they're smart. But you have to remember, most of them are just businessmen who, who of course, are educated, but in a broad sense. So you can't expect them to immediately grasp all this you know, myriad of, of technical stuff. All it's going to do is confuse them. Actually, it's probably going to embarrass them as far as, as well, I don't really understand it, but I want to ask. So, and they kind of check out. Yeah. And so I found that, that that's the best thing. Both of them are a pleasure to work with. They're both a little different personalities, but, but in both cases, they've been an extremely easy to work with, you know, kind of once we get through the uh, do you really think so? And then go, yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> so let's do this. A lot of work, but it's fun. I just enjoy, I enjoy it. Probably. It's just yeah. fun to see them grow, if you will, to really kind of switch their focus and understand what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of to touch on that as well, I've noticed, you know, as being a startup champion within New Chip and working closely with them and seeing different pitch decks, a lot of them do get very technical. 
They get really deep into the terms. And I remember reading a study back um, in 2016. They, they followed the education level of their speaking uh, for each candidate. And they found that people who really bought in the most were the candidates who were speaking on a third grade, fifth grade level and keeping it really simple. Would you agree with that? Do you think it's better oh, things simple? 100%, 100%. And I also had them take out, you know, all the all the buzzwords, all, all the abbreviations, mm-hmm. you know, all the things. A lot of them just don't know those. I mean, mm-hmm. and exactly what you said, keep it simple. You know, yeah. Keep it simple. It, it, it's the old KISS principle. I mean, it sounds, <laughs> but it, it honestly is. And then if you get them involved in your, I guess, what is it, like a nine minute presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's pretty short. So, and they have a pretty short attention span. Mm-hmm. So you got to take that nine minutes and make it really focused and really have it. And so they get it. And like, if they don't get it, well, you're not going to see them again. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, is, is um, get the feedback, you know, like, so why don't you like me? <laughs> Not letting you like me. <laughs> and I'll bet if someone's true there said, hey, you know, to be honest, I think you're a great guy, but I didn't understand one thing you were saying. <laughs> and so, so I mean, that seems a little facetious, but it's true. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I and, really had fun. And I know there's a good amount, there's that, that thought process of, if you're making it really simple, well, then how do you stand out to an investor? So how would you respond to, how do you stand out while also keeping it simple? Well, I think that's a great question. And I've learned that you have to have some reason for them to invest. A you know, market, a technology, product. But it turns out that the most important thing, the team, like it's yourself. So obviously you have to have something that you can very succinctly and very simply convey to them um, that, that this is going to not make them rich, but they get it. And it's something that they're interested in. So, well, you know, very obviously, I mean, it's not just simple words. It's, it's, it's very important simple words that create a sense of excitement and a sense of this is this could really be interesting. You know, I can't so tell me more. So um, and you don't have a lot of time, and that's the challenge: is to take your technology and your product, mm-hmm. your market, and yourself and your team, and to create a very quick, you know, book, if you will, with this person. It really wants to come back. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a challenge, and like there's no, you know, there's no only one way, but there are some things that I believe have to be in there that, that will very quickly uh, have them understand what you have. And in both these cases, I mean, it's, it's some really good stuff. Yeah. Um, and to show them that you already have some customers. You have it. I mean, the traction, of course, in the market and the product. That, that's a big thing because it's a competitive market out there to basically get invested and then to have them feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a big thing I've noticed is that a lot of different startups, they come to the table what they think someone wants to hear um, or they believe they're trying to respond what would you say are some questions a startup can ask themselves to really see if they are speaking to an investor rather than speaking to themselves? Well, I think, I think for first, um, if you have, if you have an investor like a friend, mm-hmm. you know, run it by them and, and get some feedback because um, you don't know, or you don't you probably don't know like a lot about it you know, the investor who you're going to be talking to. And to try to to present something that he gets and that he would be interested in, that you might think it's really simple because, you know, 
you get it. And I think that's where maybe I come in. And I'm not a techie. You know, like I'm a businessman, <laughs> I'm sales, marketing, operations, uh, you know, finance, blah, blah, blah. And I will add in a segue into the question, but all the startups I did, I had a technical partner and he handled technology and I handled basically everything else. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that works because he keeps focused on his part, and he lets somebody else. It's a tricky question, and it's a it's a tricky proposition because you only have one time. But I don't think there's any one formula. It's just trying to convey something that you think would cause somebody to get excited and to want to know more. And correct me if I'm wrong. But like, I think that's the idea you know, the pitch deck is to get, that's step one. And if you don't get that, well, then you got to try again with a few others. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's definitely created an interest. Can you recall a time that you heard or saw a pitch that just made you excited? And what was it about it that just got you excited? Oh, boy. Um <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Um, I think I can remember that, um, like I did see, I did see a couple that were so simple because the market was basically there, or you could extrapolate, you know, where the market was going. And like in this case, and this you know kind of dates me a little bit. It was a long time ago that. Um, Company that actually ended up joining was a company that had the first CDR writing software. Um, it really worked and it was very simple to use. And if you had that product, in which was the best, and you saw the curve of you know, CD writing, you could kind of get excited about that. Yeah. And also by looking at the reviews as to I don't know, who was best. So um, that's the only example I could really, I can really, I can really think of. I did more on the other side. I did, uh, I did some, you know, angel investing. Um, I kind of followed, kind of followed my partner, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and you know, kind of relied on him. But it's a, um, it's everybody has their own, you know, kind of button areas. Of interest to really make you excited, mm-hmm. and that was mine because you could see the curve. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the technology now is well, it's not as simple. Yeah, it's quite complex because it's a combination of it does have so many more things now. Mm-hmm. Um, that really. Yeah, and that's why being able to explain it so simply is so important because it, it is, is. and. I didn't get any pushback. Um, yeah. Either one. I mean, I did get pushback, maybe from one, but he very quickly understood. And he totally so, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's the job: mm-hmm. is to enter them and to get them to have confidence. In you that all I'm interested in is to making them better, and to making them successful. Only thing I'm interested, in. and any way I can do that. You know, using my background and using my knowledge. I mean, that's what makes it absolutely incredible. In fact, I can't wait to get a few more mentees. <laughs> both of these have been actually, they've been very similar. Yeah. And even though I, I mostly in the tech area, um, you know, I did some, you know, like in the retail, like I had a, um, had a retail um, big triathlon store that I ran, well, actually I bought it. So, you know, kind of learning what to work and learning what doesn't. But I still come back to the basis that the technology changes, mm-hmm. but the good business practices and how to grow a profitable company are basically all the same. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really good. 
And so as our last question here, it's a kind of a two-part question, but as a mentor within the New Chip Network, what would you recommend to startups as well as a mentor to get the best use out of their mentor sessions, not just within New Chip, but if anyone listening here has a mentor in general, what would you say would be the key to having a successful relationship with a mentee and a mentor? Well, I think it's communication. And I think it's my responsibility to create that comfort level and not have them be like, this guy is trying to change me or what? And I believe I was very successful doing that with both because they could see that the only thing I was interested in, and I don't know how all the mentors are, but I believe in a collaborative issue or a a collaborative relationship. Yeah. And it's not me telling them, it's them saying, "How, how do you think I can do this better or to make me more successful. And it's all about, I think, the approach. And it's giving them a lot of um, um, of respect, which obviously, because I know what they're going through. And and I know that that they've worked hard to even get to the point of being accepted into the new chip family. Mm -hmm. So, I'm already under the assumption that they're valid technology. Mm -hmm. They're obviously they're validated. So it's now getting them focused on what's important. And the pitch deck is absolutely number one. And I'm learning a lot about what I've seen and their understanding of what I'm trying to help them. Mm-hmm. You've also asked some very good questions that, uh, that I tried to answer with them, and answer you know, with you at the best I can. But I, but I really think you have to build a trust. Yep. They have to trust you. You also have to work on their time. Um, you know, I mean, anytime you want to talk, like I have one over side of the world mm-hmm. and I tell him hey look you know, anytime um, you know, I'm available and, and he really appreciates that and I I, I, mean, I take this very seriously I mean I like to have fun but I take this job you know very seriously because how much time and energy they have put in mm-hmm. to a startup and it would not be serving them well or serving me well. Mm-hmm. I kind of, you know, just I took this as a lark. So, so I'm very serious. I'm very focused. And I feel that their success is also my success. Meaning if I can make them feel a, a successful or really help them. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. No, that's great. And I love what you were saying about how you're trying to match where they're at because a startup is putting in a lot of effort and energy and you're just coming right alongside with them too. Totally. totally. And that's so important. I mean, on both sides. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, in fact, I think that's a real key. Um, and you go at their pace. Um, I have one person that just wants to get this thing done. Okay, what time it is? Three o'clock in the morning. They're on the, they're on the Zoom. The other one taking a little more measured approach, but we're on a time frame by the end of this month. And I think it's also important to have milestones. In other words, mm-hmm. when do you want this finished? And so then you work backwards and say, okay, no how many times are we going to have to? And you have to be able to slow them down because you want this you know, to be right. And a lot of times, well, I think this is okay, but let's go back. And you tell me what you think. So, yeah, I know you're right. That's the wrong word because that's not going to bring them in. And so I'm constantly evaluating and looking at what they've written you know, for their pitch deck and I think to myself, okay, is there a better way to express this 
And like a lot of this, if, if you know, that we've done in three hours, back and forth, back and forth. And it got exhausted. We had to take a break. Just because, okay. I mean, I kind of have a 15 slide, um, you know, formula or just kind of a template. Yeah. How that I've used, and then I've gotten other, from other sources. Like it seems to answer all the questions of, you know, how to very quickly, you know, just like entice these people. I mean, like in one slide or like in the first slide, a very brief, you know, company, company overview. Um, one company, you know, has said, we're actually not a startup or a restart because we have customers and we have traction. Well, that's pretty strong. I have somebody go, oh, so yes. it sounds like something that is already, you know, the train's already moving, mm -hmm. but how come you can't get it out of the station but we don't have any money? So, so you know, so, so it paints and you have to be, you have to be creative, you have to be flexible and you have to, you have to understand what they have yes. and then try to use that as the biggest um, reason or to have this investor rest. And there's no two, there's no two the same. You know, like the other one, you know, came out of another company that was going to be all his, you know, beta sites, all his you know, customers. Well, that's pretty strong too. In other words, he's not starting out like, well, I don't know who I'm going to sell this to, who's going to use this or anything. And these are examples that the investors like to have some traction to have some sales and marketing you know, penetration. And, and now not all the startups obviously have that, but it's certainly with them. Really, really agree. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with that a lot. Awesome. Well, that's the time we have, Whitney. I appreciate okay. you so much for hopping on the call. Uh, this has helped a lot. There's a lot of great key nuggets that you've given us. I think the biggest one I'm taking away, and I feel a lot of people is as well, is just keep it simple. The more Absolutely. complex it is, just keep it simple. <laughs> I like if I can just add, add one more thing, mm -hmm. just real briefly, and then have to record this just for out of time. But I've also learned that a lot, as I related to of the founders, they think it's a sprint. It's not a sprint, like yeah. it's a marathon. And you have to pace yourself to basically get that done. While saying that, you also have to set out you know three or five objectives every 90 days you have to go back and have to see okay how have I done how have I done this have I completed this have I completed this because it gets it, it gets hectic and you get off track and then you're doing things that not that you didn't talk about you know, 90 days ago oh I didn't do that and so I always use that as a tool for you know, measuring and evaluating and then redirecting of your you know, progress. And I think the biggest thing is you know, don't try to do this all by yourself. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, that is a huge That's thing. a big one. That's a big, a big thing. Oh, it definitely is. And yeah, it's really exciting to kind of see progression of them, uh, especially coming into the accelerator one is asking for help and seeking that guidance and learning and, and really diving in. So thanks so much, Whitney. I appreciate your time okay. here. That could sure. meeting, meeting our mentor. So appreciate your time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right.